So let's continue our discussion in section 4.5, our definite integration. Today we're going to spend finding C. We've done this finding C before. We did it back in the first section or two that we talked with chapter 4. So it's, it shouldn't be too miserable. Uh, we're just going to see a little U substitution with this definite integration. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time boring you with our notes. We're going to let our U, since we have a trig function here, uh, well, let's start with, if we have the first derivative and we can find the original function, then we're going to be able to integrate that function <clears throat> to be able to find our c value. So to start with, we're integrating the negative cosine of x over 2 dx. Our u, since we're working with a trig function, that u is going to be the angle that we're working with. So we're going to find the derivative there. The derivative of x over 2 is 1 half dx, isn't it? So we don't need the 1 half. We can multiply it 2 over. So we have 2 du equals our dx. Go ahead and bring that in. So we get negative 2 integrations of the cosine of u du. The integration of cosine is, you guessed it, sine of u plus c. Now we have to be very careful because these are in x, y form. These are in talking about x's, not of u's. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we replace that u with x over 2. And that's our original function there. But we have this plus c here. We can find that c value because we know the x value is pi, over two, pi and the y value is 6. So that gives us 6 equals negative 2 times the sine of pi over 2 plus c. The sine of pi over 2 goes back to our unit circle. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So 6 is going to equal negative 2 times 1 plus c. Go ahead and add your 2 over. So we end up with 8 equals c. If 8 equals c, we can go ahead and write our original function complete now as negative 2 sines of x over 2 plus 8, and that gives us our original function. Now I have just one more here, just to kind of give you, again, a little, little bit of what we're doing. Here I have 2x squared minus 4, that's going to be to the 1 half power, so I can write this as the integration of 3x times 2x squared minus 4 to the 1 half dx. Again, remember when we write our integration from a problem, we always want to put that variable of integration there. It's not a complete integration um, sentence if we don't have the variable of integration. So our u is going to be that quantity to the exponent, so 2x squared minus 4. du then is going to equal a 4x dx. I have a 3x dx, not a 4x dx, so I need to take that 4 over with the uh, du, so I get a fourth du equals x dx. So if I look at this integration then, I have 3 times that 1 fourth, so I get 3 fourths as being my coefficient there. My x dx goes out as a du, and 2x squared minus 4 is my u, so I have u to the 1 half du. If I integrate u to the 1 half, that gives me u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus my c. Now we definitely can clean this up if I multiply by 2 thirds there. And 2 thirds times 3 fourths, well that's going to be 1 half, isn't it? So we have 1 half u, u is actually 2x squared minus 4, to the 3 halves plus c. And that's my f of x function in terms of that constant. Well, I know that if I plug in 2 for x and 3 for y, I can go ahead and find my c value. So 3 is going to equal 1 half of, we have 2 squared, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, 8 minus 4, and that gives me 4 to 3 halves plus c. Continuing on there, 4 to the 3 halves. Remember, 4 to the 3 halves, I can write that as 4 to the 1 half to the third power. 4 to the 1 half is 2, and 2 to the 3rd gives us 8. So I have 1 half of 8 plus c. Go ahead and solve that out. We end up with negative 1 equals c. 
So our original function then, f of x is going to equal 1 half the quantity of 2x squared minus 4 to the 3 halves minus 1. And that gives you a couple of examples on being able to find c using our u substitution. Good luck, enjoy, happy integrating.